Good morning, Captains. This is Kent again, and welcome to the flight show. So today I wanted to do a bit of a review and demonstration of a program that um, I'm really saying is something that you've got to have, regardless of whether you're into general aviation or into um, commercial flying. And that is the release of Electronic Flight Bag 2 by Avalosoft. Um, if you have used um, electronic Flight Bag 1, you will really love using Electronic Flight Bag 2. Um, for those of you who might be new to this sort of genre, Electronic Flight Bag is basically an electronic source that allows you to plan your flights. It would have your charts or your plates for SID or STARS. SIDs being uh, your departure from a given airport, the routes that you would uh, fly, or your stars would uh, be the same thing, but except for arrivals at various airports. So it allows you to plan out your flight so that you can uh, basically have a really good piloting experience. So I wanted to show you that. Let's get to it right now. So here is the, pro the, the program in a nutshell. Um, right now you are looking at a top-down view of Seattle Tacoma International or K uh, or Kilo Sierra Echo Alpha and what you're basically looking at is the layout of the airport that way if you're taxiing from the gate to the uh, runway you're able to kind of look at your your route it also lets you know your runways that are available a lot of good information now if you look in this area right here these are all aircraft so it's also letting you know about the aircraft that are around you within plus or minus so many feet to your particular altitude. So clearly all of these aircraft are on the ground. You got one here that's taking off from the runway. These are at the stand or the gates and uh, some are about to taxi. Now let me just show you really quick. One cool thing that they have here aside from you know the planes used to have labels right so you can see that the planes have labels here when I say used to have I meant electronic flight bag one well you can take the label and position it out of the way because it might be blocking something totally cool feature never would have thought of it but once you have it it's like wow that that's useful and so again when you're coming into a gate or into an airport you might not be using electronic uh, you might not be using the ATC or air traffic control and you're like okay I've got my um, GSX and I want to use my ground services but I don't want to park my aircraft where it's the, the spot is too small and I can't use it well here you have the opportunity to use your electronic flight bag to find the gates that are of a suitable size for your aircraft, be it a small, medium, or large. Another cool feature. Now, as you can see, have all these uh, aircraft that are on the ground, and if they taxi, they start to move and they do their thing. Another thing, if you're particularly if you're used to using uh, PMDG aircraft, um, you might have to put in. Well, when you're doing your uh, programming your CDU. You know, you need to know the length of each runway so that they can properly calculate takeoff speeds. Well, these are nicely labeled. They were a little cantankerous uh, in the original electronic flight bag because it was the end of the runway. And sometimes you'd have to zoom out to see it, but it zoomed out so far you couldn't read it. I think that they've kind of fixed that problem here. Now, I am already preparing a flight to go from Seattle, Washington to Dubai. In Saudi Arabia so I thought I would just take this opportunity to build a flight I've already made the flight in uh, PFPX so that's already taken care of um, if we go over here to our aircraft you will know uh, from experience how to program your CDU well I already have the flight made and I was about to put it in here so I'm just gonna throw it in to our company route and load it so now we already have our company route for the flight in the computer. Now, you now have to put in your SID. So this is how we're going to, um, it's, it's how you're going to leave the airport in a certain path. That way planes, you know, don't run into each other and all that good stuff. And if we look over here, let me load it up real fast. Um, 
wanted to bring up the uh, planned route. This was put together in PFPX. And you see that it's going to tell you the runway that you're leaving on. But it's also giving you your flight waypoints. And at the beginning of your waypoint right here is your SID. And that's to depart the airport. And right here, the last waypoint is your star, or how to go uh, arrive at another airport. Now, you can have that information, but you don't visually necessarily know, well, what does that path look like? Well, this is what we call situational awareness. And it's easier to know what you're picking out when you kind of have a visual representation of what you're going to see. So let me, uh, what did I just do here? Okay, totally what I did was screw stuff up. All right, so let's bring back our electronic flight bag. Uh, let's see, it's right here. Um, actually, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we can build a, f a, a path, a flight, in Electronic Flight Bag. So we'll go over to this icon right here, and that stands for Flight Plan. Now, by the way, if you've used EFB before, this is going to feel a little bit more familiar to you. Uh, it didn't take me too long to figure out how to get things done. If you've never used Electronic Flight Bag before, you definitely want to buy two and not start with one. But um, it's, it's, it's a little, it's not entirely intuitive, so just bear with me. So right over here, you use this icon for flight plan. So if I click flight plan, uh, this window comes up over here, and uh, I wanted to show you. Now, you could get a flight from, let's just say you built it over in F PFX, and I could take the entire flight, and copy and paste it and then my arrival airport I would just put at the end which we were saying uh, what was the designation for that OMDB so we'll say OMDB and this once we hit next it will build our flight totally cool painless easy to do but you also have another option you could go over here to company routes. And so when you build your route in PFPX, you can set up your folders to save the flight plans in a certain space. Well, if you do that, look what's right here. It's the flight that has been created. And you can just hit that and go next. It has your altitudes, all the information that you want to put in here, call sign, the whole nine yards. But I'm going to skip that for right now. and. By the way, it's an IFR flight. And we go to next. That's the folder. And finish. Boom. Look at this. Now, they didn't give you that globe in electronic flight bag one. But now you have your flight path, and it superimposes it over a globe, of which, by the way, you can manipulate so that you can see it. So, as you see, you're actually doing a near polar route. Uh, we're flying over... Not directly over the North Pole, but definitely over the Arctic region. So it gives you a really good representation of, you know, what you're really doing in terms of your flight. I mean, that's so cool. But anyway, let's get back to work. So now that you have your flight plan, we can hit this icon. Oh, yeah. So now this is your flight. This is your um, departure place. This is your arrival. So let's just put it back over our airport. But we need to do our SID. So you see this little icon here? Depart. All right. So now we're going to put together our departure. And this chart comes up right here. Now, if we go to back to our, uh, our flight here, let's take a look what it says. We're going to do the C6 departure oh by the way we're departing on runway 34 right so we hit that icon 34 right let me bring this back and our SID as we said was C6 so you should see the C6 right there and so let's go ahead and hit that okay now 
if there is a transition, it would have been here. But as you could see from our, I keep having to bring this back up. Um, as you can see, we do not have uh, a said departure. Although the last waypoint of your um, SID should be this icon. Uh, I mean, see, it should be this waypoint, which is SEA. So since it says here we do not have any transitions, we will just hit sync. And the transition is just the point that would take you to your planned route. You have sync. And we set it. Good. Now, if we look closely, we now have our departure. Now, it says here vectors, which means the plane doesn't necessarily have a planned route that you fly. It's you would fly runway heading and then rely on ATC or air traffic control to tell you what vectors you need to get to your, your filed flight plan. So, okay, so now that we've gotten that taken care of, set, we can close this, and this window, as you can see, shows you the departure. And it's on course 345 until, essentially, you get to a given altitude and you're able to turn, uh, you know, towards your waypoint. So, if this was actually was something with a transition, your, right, your route would have actually been shown right here. So we can minimize that. We now have our departure. Now, I'll just, usually I wait till later to do this, but I'll show it to you right now because, you know, this is going to be a long flight and who knows, they may change runways. But let's take a look at our arrival. So our arrival is going to be on runway 30 right. So we can click that right here. And it's going to be an ILS approach. So notice that it's starting to build your chart right there totally cool and uh, let's take a look what is our arrival our arrival is uh, Vute Vute 3 C so if we look there it is so we go ahead and hit that there are no transitions so we set our flight plan now if I minimize this take a look it is now built your uh, uh, your star for your arrival. So this blue path right, if you did not do that, that uh, yellow line would have just gone straight to the airport. But now it has built the path that you're going to fly to come in for your landing at Dubai International. Sweet! And it was painless. So we've got our approach already built in and we're ready to rock. Okay, now there are a lot of other features that we have here. Let's take a look. You can show VOR points. You can take them out. Obviously, you have your options for your traffic. Oh, and by the way, this thing that you're looking at right here is essentially your arrival chart. So it tells you what your um, approach altitude, altitude has to be. And as you see here, it's a uh, when you're out here at level, it is 3,000 or above now right before you enter your glide, glide slope you have to be right bang on at 3,000 uh, feet. Um, you can also by the way change the units from feet to meters depending on you, you know your your metric if you're comfortable with the metric system or the English system. Um, it tells you your glide path all this information right here built in your uh, your frequency for your uh, lock your course um, it is really cool. Again Electronic flight bag, I really grow, grew to love and use, but electronic flight bag version 2 takes all of the good things that it had to offer and picks up on some of its shortcomings. Um, by the way, it'll also give you a topographical look within, uh, of the topography of a given region within a certain radius of the airport, which is pretty cool because if you think of this information takes up memory, it takes up processing power, it only shows you what you really need in this immediate vicinity. So that's a really good feature. All right, so now you see your total arrival. This is cool. Um, 
let's see, what other things do I really need to show you right off the back? Well, if your plane, let's say you want to get to where your plane is, you can hit this right here and you can tell it what to focus on. So now it's centered above your aircraft and you can switch between the overview flight, the overview look, or between that and the airport. So bouncing to. Now right now I'm at Dubai. So I can hit over here and hit Seattle and bam, there I am at Seattle, bang on, ready to go. So now the flight is planned and you have it in your electronic flight bag so you know what to expect for your entire route and then you get all this goody information over here your cruising altitude your estimated time of arrival all of that will show up so let's just go ahead and finish up uh, planning this flight in the aircraft i mean all right so we're going to uh let's see hold on one second okay so i've already put in the flight to our aircraft so we just have to do our sit and departure so as we've stated before we're uh departing on runway 34 right and we're using the departure c6 so we got that and there is no transition so we can go straight to route that's okay and Again, it might change, but if you want to go ahead and do it, I'll, we'll do it for the sake of argument here. Uh, we're due to land on runway 30 right, so ILS 30 right, and our star is, what do we have here? I forgot. Oh, yeah, Vutec, this looks like Vutec, so I'm just going to call it that. Here we go, Vutec 3, there we go. And do we have it? Yes, it has our... No, no, this is not our transition, so we don't need to... We didn't even put it in the other one, so we don't need to do that. So we go to route, activate, bam, ready to go. Zero fuel weight, and I'm just going to say... I didn't program this, I'm just putting it in. 10% uh, fuel reserves, and our cruising altitude is going to be... Uh, 31,000 feet. So flight level 310. And our cost index I calculated to be 40. Alright. So, don't mind that cruising altitude. We're going to do it anyway. Insufficient fuel. Ah. Well, I'm going to have to add some more fuel. My calculations seem to be a bit off. So let's just go in here. Uh, go to a new setup fuel and that might be because I've been sitting here gabbing well I'm gonna do this for now since we you know we're filming and everything and I don't want to take too much time figuring stuff out I'm gonna put in 280 I'm gonna have to redo those calculations but we'll see all right so then we return center of gravity and I said we're gonna do flaps 15 takeoff so here are our speakers I knew we were laying down with a full flight and lots of fuel so our plane is ready for departure and now you had a good look at electronic flight bag for uh, how it can help you with your flight I hope I showed you a little tease of what you could do with it and I highly recommend it you will not be sorry with this purchase so hey do me a favor leave me a couple of likes a um, thousand if you could uh, and I really really appreciate you subscribing to the channel and I will talk to you later this is Kent again and I look forward to seeing you in the virtual skies